Hi, and welcome to the She Gallery Show. We have a very special show for you today with two guests, um, music, musician and artist um, Oliver Torres and educator and activist Deanne Miguel. Before we get our show started today, I want to direct you to our She Gallery website. It is sharinghisenergygallery.net. Now, I want to remind you all of the guests on today's show will have links to our site. Um, so if you're interested about finding out more information, you could just go to our website. Again, that's sharinghisenergygallery.net. I will also like to remind um, the audience that this is a call-in show. So you could see the number below at 312-738-1060. Um, and feel free to call any of our guests mm -hmm. <laughs> right there uh, with any questions you might have today. So our first guest today is going to be Oliver Torres. Oliver, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, Oliver and I have some mutual friends. We have, um, you know, kind of similar growing up stories. We were able to meet a couple of weeks ago and just talk about our, um, our similarities growing up on the south, um, southwest side. And he's currently doing some amazing things as an artist and a musician. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and how that has shaped you to... Sure. I mean, uh, my background... She just mentioned uh, South Side of Chicago, and uh, a wonderful place, very cultural uh, oriented and uh, fun, exciting, always something going on. And um, I'm a musician, DJ, producer, royalty manager. Uh, and as a DJ, I just want to clarify, it's not just, you know, go and press play and uh, people dance to music because I did run into somebody that was, you know, oh, yeah. Can you're... you play at my wedding? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Depends. No, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> like, that's what the person said. No, the, the person actually said, oh, uh, oh, you're a DJ. Oh, my nephew's a DJ. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of insulting, like... Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe he didn't mean it like that, but... But you do the old school stuff with the records I do and like turn real, tableism. real DJ, right? yeah, DJ. a dying art form. Hopefully, I mean, it's, it's kind of making a comeback, so that's good. You think so? Yeah, I hope so. Well, I DJ as, uh, as an art, so I'm a DJ in bands, a couple bands, Ill State and all the cool molecules. I produce... It's a cool name. Um, when I'm not DJing, I'm producing, I'm basically making ideas come to life in music form and um, I do royalty management for J.B. Ross and Associates. And, and what does that mean, royalty management, for people who don't know what that means? Basically, um, anytime a song is utilized, someone has to pay for it if it's not for promo use. Uh, if you're at Walgreens and you hear music, Walgreens, Walgreens is paying to play music and if it's your song playing you should you're entitled to a payment so, or and that's just one out of a lot of uh, ways of um, getting a royalty from your music so that's that's kind of a, a breakdown on what I do okay what you're currently doing that's interesting so you're an artist and you kind of work with artists and musicians as well um, and do you want to talk a little bit about um, your background growing up on the southwest side of Chicago a little bit? I'm going to talk about that and how that has kind of shaped you as, um, as the artist and musician that you are now. Sure. Uh, well, I, it, the, the neighborhood that I grew up with in, back of the yards, 50th and Oakley to be exact, if you want to, you know, call out neighborhoods. It's uh, it it has a lot of violence, um, in it. And growing up there, I could have you know been a drug dealer or this or that or kept on you know with the with the negative of those type of neighborhoods. But I was introduced to music with uh, turntables by my brother Alonzo. And I just kind of focused on that and learned new genres and, and just kind of just all my energy went into that. It was like an escape uh, instead of, you know, stealing cars or robbing trains. 
I was going to the record store and, and purchasing, you know, some house records and, and started learning how to beat match or, or scratch. It was, it was in a way, it, it is uh, very therapeutic, therapeutic yeah. for, for somebody that's somewhere that's not so positive all the time. Yeah, that's awesome, you know, being able to have an outlet. And I feel like, you know, people, um, you know, from these neighborhoods, we definitely need that um, because it's very easy to kind of fall into, you know, that trap of, you know, either um, gangs or, or drug use, you know, and that's, that's unfortunate. Um, when we met a couple of weeks ago, you did mention something that I thought was really interesting. Um, Oliver had said that he feels like him and his friends um, have suffered from, uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, from growing up in these types of neighborhoods. And I just thought that that was really interesting because I had never heard it in that context. Um, you know, I usually, and maybe this is my ignorance, you know, but usually when you hear about PTSD, I think the general public thinks, oh, a war veteran. Um, you know, but to think that, uh, you know, people in these communities um, that struggle with violence uh, also face PTSD. That was just really like eye-opening for me. So can you just talk a little bit about that? Like how can PTSD have an effect on these kinds of neighborhoods? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a doctor or mm -hmm. anything, so I don't want people to think That's that I, I'm diagnosed or I know people that mm -hmm. are, they have PTSD. I don't know if they do, but it is something to bring uh, to people's attention that don't know about it because, um, like you mentioned, it's associated with war veterans. Mm -hmm. But you can be in a car accident and get PTSD. So if that's the case, that means that if you see your friend or sibling get gunned down in front of you, you might have PTSD from it. I don't. I don't know, it's possible, but uh, it would make sense to kind of read up Explore on it. Explore that and, a little and, bit more. Mm -hmm. And that way you can know, you know, some of your reactions aren't necessarily the right way to go about things and getting violent in an argument and punching the sh hell out of something isn't, you know, it, it may mm -hmm. come from a violent, uh, you know, experience that you had. So yeah. that is something to uh, at least take into consideration. Yeah, I think that that's, um, you know, when we talked about that, I just thought that that was really interesting because I had never um, heard that. And, you know, talking to my husband, who is a therapist, said, yes, clearly, like anybody who's under any sort of, you know, trauma, um, that's it's very common, not only Keyword for trauma. trauma. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's very common. So. I think that's it. that'd be interesting for people to explore and people who come from these neighborhoods who, um, you know, might be able to kind of seek, seek help um, and also maybe realize that maybe that this is what they're going through. Um, so what are you doing now? So you have El State. Um, you also mentioned All some the other. Cool <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a really cool name, by the way. Um, so any other like projects that you're working on right now? Uh, I'm working on a movie. Um, Leaves of Five. I'm doing the the engine, the sound engineering for the surround sound. Um, Is it a documentary or like a? Uh, it's it's more of a drama, Chicago sort of scene. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, if you want to go on the She Gallery website, mm -hmm. you can find more information oh, cool. on it. Okay. Um, there's a speaker that we created also called the Funk Box. Uh, so which I don't I, don't I thought he was gonna bring today audience by the way, which is really, really cool. And you will have a link for there, that there, on the there website. There should be a link. Okay. And you can go buy one it's or two really or cool. three. Can you just describe what that is really quick? The funk box is a speaker that's uh, funky looking, made out of um, uh, oak. The the at least the outside is made mm -hmm. out of oak and um, it's portable. It's, uh, it charges devices, it has bass, it bumps, it's awesome. You gotta check it out to actually judge for yourself. But yeah, it's really cool. It is, is that available already for it purchase? Is, it okay. is, if you, And um, you're, you're doing that in collaboration with your brother, Alonzo? Right, okay. right. He's an artist himself, and 
I'm the I'm the music guy and he's the you know he makes the shapes. Yeah, very cool. Um, and so you're really successful. And we when we met a couple weeks ago, you talked about going back to um, the community. And is that something you know often? People become successful and sometimes they forget about their community and sometimes they decide to go back. So can you talk a little bit about um, why you're going back? Well, I don't want to go back to game bang or anything. I want to go back to help and, and bring uh, positive and uh, try to help the community evolve uh, one way or another. And one of the ways is by sharing my wisdom and knowledge and hopefully kids that are there, uh, I can help, you know, broaden their minds and actually, you know, fill out an application to go to college. You might live that long, you know, it, you're, everyone in the, in the neighborhood that grows up like this um, thinks, oh, I'm not, what's the point? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. So you don't end up thinking about a future and just pretend you know, that you are going to have a future and, and, and pursue that or, or just do something, uh, music or art or something to, you know, um, express yourself as opposed to uh, all of your energy being thrown at, uh, you know, gangs and, and all the negative that's down there. Yeah, I think that's great and I think that people definitely need that. And, you know, you got that sort of influence, too, from your brother. I got really positive influences from my sister, and, you know, I thank God for that. But, um, you know, sometimes these kids don't have those positive influences right. in their life, so that they really do need mentors, and, you know, within their own communities, um, to really say, like, hey, I was you, you know, so and so many years ago, and, and this is what I did, and, and let me help you, you know, versus just being some sort of outsider who thinks that they're going to be a missionary in our uh, in our neighborhoods to like help you know the kids? It's very important for people who've lived in these neighborhoods, who've lived it, who've done it, uh, to actually come back. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Um, you mentioned a forum at Columbia College at the end of this month. Oh yes, mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested in music, uh, we're having a panel on the history of Chicago music on the thirtieth. 30th of March. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly what the sure what the address is. Yeah, I, it might be Columbia. located at the Dance Center, um, which I think is 1305 South Michigan, but it's, is it the history of house music? No, it's no? the okay. history of Chicago music, and okay, there'll be different cool. panels, but this one is uh, specifically R&B and doo-wop wow. and uh, record row back when Chicago, you know, ruled the music industry and chess very, records. Very, very cool. Uh, that sort of stuff. Very cool. Well, Oliver, thank you uh, so much for thank being you. with us today. It was a pleasure uh, talking to you. Um, I do want to direct our guests to um, the She Gallery show. Um, and our website, again, uh, is sharinghisenergygallery.net. And um, if you would like more information about um, Oliver's The Funk Box or uh, some of his new panels or the uh, royalties comp um law firm that he works for, just go ahead and visit our She Gallery website and you will have links for all of that. Um, our next guest today is uh, Deanne McGill. And Deanne was, uh, Deanne and I met in like a professional development, you know, for teachers. Your, your memory's better. Yeah, I think my memory's a little bit better. And then I saw him on Instagram and he was doing some really cool stuff. But um, I'm going to let him kind of tell you a little bit about that. So um, Deanne works for an organization called Illinois Council uh, for Handgun Violence. So I just wanted him to tell us a little bit about that. How long has it been around? What sorts of programs are offered? Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. um, so the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence, uh, we're the oldest and largest um, statewide organization that works to prevent the devastation from gun violence. Um, I run the education program, so as I tell my kids, we either... Um, educate, advocate, or attempt to influence those who legislate. So if it deals with gun violence in the state of Illinois, we're kind of dealing with it in some form or fashion. And that organization has been going since 1975. So is, is that like the kids writing in like their senators and stuff Oh, uh, we like do that. that. Okay. Um, actually, today I spent it all day at a school. I actually met with the aldermen, uh, one of the aldermen in Inglewood. We're planning a peace march. Um, that the kids are helping organize and um, so we do a lot of stuff art um, and yeah 
That is really, really cool. So you so you run the education program, and uh, what sort of, which high schools are you working with currently right now? Uh, high schools. Is it just high schools? Or no, high school time? and elementary. Oh, very um, cool. Right yeah, now, it starts young, right? Yeah. yeah oh, absolutely. We go, um, I've worked with kids as low as third grade just talking about things like bullying. So, you know, because bullying can sometimes lead to gun violence and all those inroads and, and you know, social interactions. But high schools right now, we're with uh, Hubbard High School, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Um, I, I love Hubbard, and they're amazing. It's no Juarez, I mean, that's As, where I work. You know, but. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually did a, a workshop at Juarez earlier this year, um, and then I'm working with Henderson Elementary, we're working with Parker, um, we just finished working with McNair. Are these working, all Southwest? Uh, um, south and West Side. Okay. Um, so we, we've kind of focused um, on, the, on the neighborhoods that are have high concentrations of gun violence, okay. um, which, which is where, you know, we can be most effective and work with kids who are are most affected, you know, who are in, enduring, as you, like the last second to say, enduring that trauma. So absolutely. Um, can you share some success stories with us? Maybe some of the things you guys ha have been doing? Oh man, mm -hmm. yes. I know it's, it really seems <laughs> like a lot, but. Uh -huh. um, on the educations, uh, I still, last year, so last year, uh, Henderson Elementary um, had a student shot and killed. Um, in November, so November 2015, and then... This is an elementary school student? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, he was eighth grader. Okay. Eighth grader, walking home from the barbershop. And uh, that was uh, Jaquante Riles. And then following that, a three-year-old was shot in front of the school on a Saturday. Um, and so following that, I remember going in that following week and saying to kids, like, so what are we going to do about this? Um, and that started just a conversation, and I just wrote down everything that was said, and I ended up in... Um, a peace march and rally last year uh, that was very successful, um, and it gives the kids a sense of empowerment. You know, oh, absolutely. Uh, people. I think a lot of times when these things happen, they feel powerless. So if you can teach, especially kids, here's what you can do when this happens in your neighborhood to be most effective. Uh, that that's what plants those seeds that go on to grow into adult activists and politicians who have you know. Um, the community at the forefront of their mind and all those things. That's great. So, uh, do the kids even get their parents involved? Oh, absolutely. Like if, yeah, I mean, I would imagine yes. if you, you know, you're an eight year old and, and you were, we were working on this cool project and you come home absolutely. and, you know, it starts this conversation, this a different dinner conversation, you know, versus, you know, so and so got shot. It's so and so got shot and this is what we're doing. What we're doing. Yeah. And to me, one of the coolest things, and you as a teacher can appreciate this, I'll go to a school and I'll say, so have you guys ever met your alderman? And kids will go, what's an alderman? They and I say, okay, let's rewind. So once, you know, we go through all that, I go to Henderson and I say, so guys, you know, should we invite the Alderman? Of course we're going to invite Alderman Lopez. And we're going to invite this, you know, and they know the names. And they, you know, let's just Google them. We'll, we'll write him a letter. That's perfect. You know, that that's awesome. that's perfect. So... That's what we do. That's yeah. what, you know, and I dig it. So. Yeah, that is awesome. And you kind of already answered my next question, which is <laughs> how are students using activism in their community? Uh, um, so, you, so you were also a teacher um, yes. for a while and, and a war vet. Yes. 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 And yes. lived in Alaska. Yes. And so so how, how have um, all of these, you know, experiences kind of shaped, um, I guess, like who you are, that, the short version maybe? Um, <laughs> I, I think it all comes back to... Um, the idea as a social studies teacher of, of the best authenticity I can offer. Um, I grew up on the south side of Chicago in the Roseland neighborhood. Um, I've seen violence firsthand and gun violence. I've I've shot at people. I've been shot at. That's part of war. You shot it? That's, oh, part, okay. that's a oh, part of in, in the context not of in, war. Not, okay. right, <laughs> not, like, not here in Chicago. Down. I was I was a, I was a band geek. So yeah. Uh, um, okay. But you know when you I've had all those experiences. So there's some sense of empathy with what kids are enduring. You know because kids are seeing that in Inglewood and in Austin and North Lawndale and Garfield Park. Um, so I can at least have some sense of, you know, empathy to, to that oh. situation, although it's a different context. Um, How long were you, um, you were in Iraq or in Afghanistan? Afghanistan, okay. for one year, uh, nine months in country. Okay. So yeah, um, and, and so it just gives me an opportunity to, to have a greater perspective. I think, you know, sometimes we, we have such close perspectives because we don't necessarily get to see the world and have these, you know, multiple experiences. Um, and kind of another reference to the last segment, um, I've seen veterans who have PTSD, and then you'll see a student who has the you know, same characteristics here in Chicago. And I'm like, well, these two people are acting exactly the same, and one is PTSD diagnosed, mm -hmm. then it stands to reason that perhaps this child is also has PTSD. And I see that a lot. So, 
it gives me just some That's really interesting. Yeah, and when Oliver was talking, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about you, like, yeah, being a vet and yeah. then also working, you know, for the Illinois Council for Handgun Violence. Um, and I, you know, how... Yeah. I've used guns. You mm -hmm. know, I've, I've shot guns. Um, and, you know, so I have experience in that. So even when we're talking with um, hunters and gun owners, I lived in Alaska, I've, you know been hunting, I've utilized guns for that fashion. So I just kind of have a lot of great experiences that give me good perspective. Yeah, so you're not just like this anti-gun guy. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in the green room. Mm -hmm. um, so your your organization is, isn't necessarily against guns. Oh, no, absolutely okay. not. Okay, can you kind no. of elaborate on um, what it is? We're not an anti-Second Amendment, anti-gun organization. Mm -hmm. We support, um, so kind of like when Concealed Carry came to Chicago, Tame, Illinois, and now we had this law, we actually created a handbook to just let people know. So now that you know you have the ability to conceal carry, what does that mean? How do you do that safely and how do you do that legally? Um, and actually, a gentleman from the ISRA, the Illinois State Rifle Association, actually came to me one day and, and you know complimented. He was like, "That handbook is really that actually was really cool." And we don't necessarily agree on a lot of things, but he could, you know we could agree that this was a great piece of education for people to be legal, safe gun gun handlers. And that's and that's yeah. around the time when those stickers started showing up the in the yeah. And so does that mean uh, does that mean that they can't even conceal and carry inside that building? Um, um, if that sticker is up, that means that the like the owner or the business does not want guns in that, in that okay, space. Okay, yeah, regardless if it's concealed. Yes. Right, okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think those, um, I think people were kind of, you know, maybe like unaware of the concealing carry law. So when those stickers came out, people like, free, you know, kind of like freaked out. Like, w were there guns in here before? <laughs> or, you know, what exactly yeah. happened? So. And, and we help to educate, you know, the public mm -hmm. on, on those things too. So, you know, so absolutely. We do a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, and especially in this political climate, uh, you know, talking about, you know, Second Amendment rights is really important. And I think most people think that these, um, you know, gun organizations are, are just completely anti-guns. But uh, this organization seems to be really educating the public on how to safely uh, use, you know, uh, and, and acquire and um, be owners of firearms. Um, so also when um, I reached out to Dion, it was via Instagram. Um, and he had started this really interesting campaign that used the hashtag um, Chicago Stand Up. Chicago Stand Up. Um, and that's kind of what got me, you know, I wanted to reach out to him before, um, but, you know, thank you, social media. Um, but, you know, seeing his Instagram, it was very, you know, interesting. And he had all of these images of uh, just different people having these signs up. And I'll actually bring up his Instagram in a second. So I just wanted to know. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about that and what this um, sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, a couple weeks ago, we had um, here in the city three adolescents that were shot and killed in pretty rapid succession. Um, Takia Holmes, um, Levante White Jr., and Kanari uh, Bowers Gentry. So Kanari was a student at Henderson Elementary, which I do a lot of work at. So the the three, the combination of the three, just kind of struck me. Kind of was it was very emotional. Um, and I, as a lot of people in, I think, in Chicago do, I said, well, what can I do? You know, um, what can I do right this moment? And I went to bed, um, it was a Wednesday night, and I woke up the next day, and I remember going to Hubbard High School, and um, I took, I just took a picture. I said, if nothing else, I can let other people know that this is not acceptable, at least in my eyes to me. And so I took that picture, the first one. Um, and then, then the person who took the first picture, he took the second picture of himself. Uh, that's uh, Coach Franklin Boyd, a, a teacher at, at Hubbard. Then a coworker came around the corner and she was like, what are you guys doing? I said, well, showed her the sign. She goes, can I take a picture? Um, so I started off with three pictures. Um, maybe a half hour later, a friend sent me a fourth picture. Um, and now I have uh, 125 wow. uh, pictures. And so um, I'm and just... Oh. Yeah, and, and I'm sure the audience could see, and it's just a wide variety of, like, different people, different ages, um, it looks like, in different communities. And you have people from other, um, just like com from completely other neighborhoods and other cities who also yes. have I, contributed photos and to this. I think sometimes we forget that gun violence is, is a, it's not even a, na it's a national problem for sure. Mm -hmm. It's not just a Chicago problem. 
Um, and, you know, it's something that we can all <laughs> relate to. You got to have your picture of Chance. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but it's something we can all relate to. And so I think it's something that resonates with people, which was what I hoped would happen with the pictures. And it has, you know, people from other neighborhoods outside the city, other cities. Um, I've, I've had someone from another country even write me about it and say, I'm going to send you a picture. So um, it's, it's great. So, yeah, amazing Instagram, amazing uh, hashtag campaign. Dion, thank you so much for being with us. If you are interested in um, any more information regarding uh, Dion or Oliver, please visit our She Gallery website. Again, that's sharinghisenergygallery.net. We will also be at the Cultural Center for, um, you know, a live, uh, gallery, a live art gallery at the Lafe. Lake FX CreativeCon um, at the end of or sorry at the yeah at the end of April April 21st and Saturday April 22nd so please check out our website for more for more info thank you so much for being with us today.